me up when uh, when it's time, um, but mm -hmm. I will try and stick to that. So, okay. So I'm yes, I'm Tristram Hooley. I work in um, the University of Derby in the UK, and also in the Inland Norway University in uh, Norway. And I spend all my time thinking about career development. And so I'm going to talk a bit about some of what I've been doing and some of why I think career development is so important and hopefully try and interest all, all of you in getting involved in this more. Um, so what, I was, what I'm sort of hoping to cover is probably, I might, I might skip over some of these things as, um, as we've only got about 25 minutes, but I'll, I'll try and cover the main thing. So I'm gonna talk a bit about why careers matter, why we need career guidance, I might say a little bit about the pandemic and then the idea of uh, integrated guidance. So I'm just gonna kind of go through those, but the first two are probably the most important. So let's start with that. So um, when we when we think about career, if we you know if we if we try and define what it means, if we put it into Google, we get stuff like this out. So we get the idea of finding your dream job. We get the idea of sort of moving upwards in life, and we get the idea of perhaps um, experiencing a lot of choices, doing some planning, all of those sorts of things. And we also often get metaphors like the race. You know, we're trying to always do better, go faster, um, get, get the best outcome, perhaps earn a really high salary and so on. Now, this is all important and it's based, I think, around the centrality of the idea of paid work. So paid work is a really important part of our life. It, 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 and there's lots of research that talks about this. It, it, it offers a survival and power in our life. So obviously we need to work, to eat and so on. But it also offers us some other things as well. The ability to create, grow and transform the world around us. But we also at work, we socialize, we connect with others and so on. And, and this idea of paid work is really important to uh, this concept of career. And so career then I, I think we try and define it a little bit more broadly than just being about choosing a job or choosing work so career is our journey through life learning and work it's about it's about finding our way finding our place finding our path and one of the things I'm going to argue today is that it's something that we do with other people not not solely alone so careers uh, in, in our lives, we're trying to make our lives better through our careers, but also the lives of those around us. So I think we also can exert some control over our career, um, e even though we, there's also limits. We can't pretend that we can do anything we want to do, um, but we can exert some control. And that's one of the great things about career and why it's really important to help people to think about their career and develop their career, because it's about really helping them to control and develop their life. So our careers then are something that happen across our life. Um, so lifelong, as we get older, we develop our careers, we carry on developing it. I would argue we start our career when we're first born and we continue at least until we die. Um, and some people would argue longer. But it's also important that we, we manage our career day to day as well. So we manage it across our life. Where do you want to be in 10 years time? That's a good careers question. But it's also equally important to think, how do you want to spend your time? Do you want to spend your time uh, with your family? Do you want to spend it at work? Do you want to spend it with your friends? Do you want to spend it doing different activities? And every day we're making decisions that are, uh, are about you know, how we spend our time and their career decisions. So the, the, the young boy or girl at school who has to decide whether they're gonna go out and play with their friends after school, or whether they're gonna come home and, and do their homework, they're making a career decision. They're deciding how they're gonna spend their time. They're, it's gonna have implications for the rest of their life. And so the trick with career, when we're talking to people about career, is helping them to think about how they spend that time. So our real careers are not just like Google says, going upwards, ever upwards. They're, they're going up, up sometimes, back sometimes, um, you know, round in circles sometimes. 
we, we talk about careers as being twisted and complex. Sometimes people use the metaphor of the crazy paving. So, you know, there's never any straight lines in our careers. Things don't always go the way we expect. And I would argue that they're a journey, not a race. It's not, it's not that important that you uh, get to the finish line first or that you earn the most. It's more important that you find ways to be happy, to do things that, that are meaningful to you and to, and to do them with people who are meaningful to you. So our careers are more like a journey than they are like a race often. And they're also where we negotiate with power, with institutions and with structures. So if we think about the, the, you know, one of the most basic things that we think about in careers is how do you get a job? Well, when you get a job, you've got all sorts of negotiations to do with your employer. How much are they going to pay you? How many hours are you going to work and so on? And so career is about the individual, but it's also about how the individual intersects with employment, with school systems, with society. And what we can see is that there are many different ways that we might negotiate with power, with institutions and with structures in our career. And that might include everything from, um, you know, just having a clear idea of what we want to do through to as the people in these pictures are doing, um, you know, collective bargaining, arguing for better pay and better conditions. So our careers are social, not individual. Nobody has a career entirely on their own. We work for people, we work with people, we have our partners, we have our children, we have our parents, and all of those people interact with our career. They, our decision about how much time we spend at work is also our decision about how much time we spend with other people. Our career is about the balancing of all these things. So they're not just about paid work, they're about hobbies, they're about family, they're about citizenship, they're about um, studying. Our careers are jo the joining together of all of these things, but they but paid work is often in the centre. Not for everyone, but for most people, paid work is in the centre. So this, if we have these careers, these wonderful, complicated things, then what is career guidance? Well, it's where it's it's how we go about helping other people to to master and manage this process of career, which as I've just set out is really complicated. It's got loads of other people in it. It's got loads of choices. It's, it's happening every day and it's happening throughout your life. So people need some help with it. So in a book that I wrote, we, we described career guidance as this. It's career guidance supports individuals and groups to discover more about work, leisure and learning and to consider their place in the world and plan for their futures. And we go on to say it can take lots of different forms. You can do it in different ways. But it's this idea of considering your place in the world and planning for your future that's at the heart of career guidance. Now, there's a lot of evidence. I do a lot of research. One of the things we're trying to do is build up evidence that shows that career guidance is effective. And what we try and do is uh, what the evidence says is, is that there are a range of individual and social impacts from uh, career guidance and there's a, you know there's lots of evidence multidisciplinary it's international there's there's lots of stuff so we know that career guidance works for some things and we know quite a lot about how it works I'll say a little bit more about that but that's something that if you go into doing studies on this it, it's something that you should explore and also contribute to so what does it impact for individuals? Well, career guidance helps individuals to engage with the education system. It enhances their performance, so increases their motivation. I know why I want to go to school because I, I know what I want to do in my life. It supports our transitions between education and work, so it helps us to find a place in, in work and it contributes to lifelong well-being and success. And We've got, I won't go into this in a lot of detail, this is a kind of model that, that we use to help think about some of the different impacts. It, it develops our skills, it develops our attitudes, our behaviours, and also leads to some sort of longer term impacts for the individual. But it's also, career guidance is very important for individuals, but it's also important for society. It's part of a, an effectively functioning 
education and employment system. It, it greases the wheels. It makes things work better. It's a safeguard against ineffective and imperfect systems. So you might find that there are qualifications you've got that don't lead you into an obvious job. You might find that there are jobs which there is no obvious qualification for. And career guidance helps us to bridge that gap and manage that situation. So public policy argues, um, so when we think about this, this is why government might buy into career guidance. Well, it helps the education system to work well. It helps the labour market. So, so it helps people to find their way to employers and employers to find the people they need. And it also contributes to social aims. So it, it contributes to active ageing, social equity, social inclusion, and so on. And we've recently been thinking about this more and we've expanded it to say, well, actually, that's not all it can do. Yes, it's got these economic benefits. Yes, it's got these educational benefits and social benefits. But it also contributes to good health. If we're happy at work, if we have a good life, if we um, have a good balance between our work and our, our family and so on, we're healthier, we're happier. And it's also if we're worried about the environment, and many of us are, um, Career guidance can also help us to address that by um, when, when countries are, or businesses are trying to change, they're probably going to ask individuals to change, to develop their skills and so on. And career guidance can help people to do that. And it also can contribute to peace and justice. For example, rehabilitating people after they've committed crimes or helping to rebuild economies after we've had periods of conflict. So career guidance is a powerful thing and it works for individuals and for groups. I'm gonna skip over this bit, but what I'm just briefly gonna say is that this is, this is something that people all over the world are thinking about. And in 2019, we had a meeting where we brought together 33 countries in Norway and we got policymakers from all of these countries to talk about career guidance. And we ended up producing a series of recommendations. As I say, we're a bit pushed for time, so I'm going to just skip through those. But but what the point I'm making to you is that this is important and it's seen all over the world as being important. And it's something that governments are investing in. And so it's something that one of the things that we need to do is to encourage people to invest in it and encourage governments to invest in it as well. So I'm just going to say a little bit about this kind of immediate context, because we've we've just been through globally a major disruption in our life, uh, in our societies, in international trade through COVID. We're now experiencing periods of recession and so on. And so we've had a series of labour market impacts from that. Many people have lost their job or they've had to change job during this period. But an, an unemployment isn't the whole story. We've seen work patterns shifting. So many people starting to do things like work online much more. Um, people thinking about how they spend their time more um, and also some really challenging uh, experiences for, for young people during the, the pandemic. And, and so one of the things that we're going to try and do with career guidance is to help society to heal, help society to come together in the aftermath of this. Now, this is um, a, uh, she's a, the chief economist of the IMF and, and she talks about how COVID is gonna leave scars into the medium term. And she talks about how it's gonna happen. It's gonna be about labor markets. It's gonna be about um, lost schooling and so on. And we've got all of these problems now. We're now in the kind of post COVID time and we're trying to deal with all of this. And so career guidance is trying to help societies to do this by put, helping people to find their way back to work, help their people, people find their way back to learning and so on. It's also trying to deal with some of the mental health issues that people have experienced um, post uh, COVID. So many people found the, the pandemic very difficult and it's not just the pandemic, other, other crises like this also have uh, created problems. And we've seen this sort of big shift in our social connections, a recognition of our vulnerability and our fragility of our societies. And, Ultimately, I think we all ask ourselves a question and we should ask ourselves this question more often. And this in a way is the central question that career guidance asks you to think about. What's important to you? What matters to you? 
And has has the pandemic or other recent changes in your life, have they changed that? And if you can identify what's important to you, you can also start to think about how we go forward. So that's what we're about doing in Career Guidance. We're helping people to develop hope, agency, to gain control over their lives and to build resilience. And, and you know, I wish I could say to you that, that COVID was the last crisis we were going to experience, but I, I'm afraid I think that we're going to experience many more in our lifetimes. And so as society gets shaken and changed and hits setbacks, we need to help people to think about what's important to them, how are they going to respond to that, where are they going to go, and how is that going to affect their work, their learning, their thinking about their life. And so that's what we do. So career guidance then is part of reconstruction strategies. We've done some work on that. And I think one of the things that we should all be doing as you get more involved in career guidance is to think about career guidance, not just as your work, but also as something which has a social mission. It has a social purpose, which is about helping people to find their best life and helping societies to organize uh, their resources as well as they can, even when that might be difficult. So, you know, the, the pandemic has been a kind of rehearsal for many of the problems that we might experience. And we, we can see all around the world, we've got people protesting, challenging um, different uh, climate policies and, and engaging with different crises. And so we're gonna experience many more of these crises. And in these moments of crises, we, we reflect, we think, and we help people to manage their lives and their careers. We help people to find their way to a better life. So if it's right that the, the pandemic and other crises have changed how we work, and there's lots of different ways in which that's happened, particularly in, involving technology, um, changes to work-life balance, um, particular challenges related to human-centered work, which requires us normally to be face-to-face -face with people, we need to think about new ways of doing what we do. So we can't always rely on the traditional ways that career guidance was delivered, which might be one-to-one -one counseling style. Now that's important. And it's one of the things that if you get more involved in career guidance, you will definitely want to learn and get good at is how to sit and have a career conversation with somebody, how to support someone to think about their future, to talk their way um, through their options and, and make a plan. But we'll also have to do stuff online. We'll have to help people to develop their careers by, giving, by developing online resources, by interacting with people as we're doing today uh, and so on. So one of our arguments that we've been making increasingly when we're training career guidance professionals is that you need to have a multiple range of different competencies. You need to be able to um, use digital technologies. You need to be able to work with people face to face. You need to be able to do one-to-one -one work in counseling style, but you also need to work with groups and classrooms and systems and so on. So we think what you can do is you can think about what you know, and you've all got professional experience that's relevant. You can adapt it, you can experiment, you can look for models to, to draw on, and you can access professional learning. And if you're interested in this kind of idea, and particularly in some of the stuff around using digital tools to support career guidance, then you might want to go onto my blog. There's some resources there. I'll also try and put the slides from today up there as well. Um, in Norway, we've been trying to think about what people need to learn to have a positive career. And, and um, we've come up with a series of sort of competencies. So we need to be able to be good at managing change and stability. We need to be good at thinking about how we fit into context. We need to be thinking about you know, possibilities and luck and, and so on. And so one of the things we're doing when we're, we're doing career guidance is helping people to think about different ways of approaching uh, their life. In England, we've come up with something very similar where we say, what, what helps you to have a successful career? Well, there's no one answer to that, but, but of course, what we can say is there are some things that are gonna help you. So if you're good at, growing and developing and learning throughout life. If you're good at exploring possibilities, doing research on what's out there, managing your career in terms of you know, making decisions and so on, 
but also creating opportunities, being entrepreneurial. And then I've talked about this a lot, the idea of balancing your life and work. And then you need, I think, in career increasingly, and in the discussion that I've given you today about crisis, about the environment, about the pandemic, all tells us that our careers don't happen outside of context. They happen in a context. So if you're good at uh, developing your career, you, you will be good at figuring out what's going on in the world, what's going to matter in government, in politics, in the economy, in the environment. Figuring all of this out will give you an advantage. And then as careers professionals, we, we then need to think about the different ways that we can interact with people. And as I've said, career guidance is not one thing, it's many things. It has many different techniques. It can be online, it can be face-to-face, -face, it can be one-to-one. -one. But what we're always about is helping people to develop their career, to develop their agency, to think about what they can do with their life and give them practical solutions about how to move forward. So at the heart of all this is the creativity of the careers professional and their understandings of their clients and students. And this is what we're, I think, trying to build is that when you're doing career guidance, you need to have skill and technique and knowledge about what's been done before. But you also need to listen to your students, hear what they want and help them in whatever way you find helpful or they find helpful to move their life forward. So I'm going to finish there. There's various contact details if you want about me. But one of the things I, I think I would encourage you to sort of reflect on as we as you, as you think about moving into career guidance is, you know, why is it we offer career guidance? What is it that we're trying to achieve? And I've suggested some ideas. Each country will think of it in different ways. Um, each different part of the world will think about it in different ways. So what is it that matters? What are you trying to achieve here? What approaches, tools, technologies and techniques should we use to support people in their career learning? How do we believe that students and, and um, uh, Career, uh, and our clients. Um, actually, in Norway, they have a word. They they describe it as they just say they're they're way seekers or, or or road seekers. So people who are looking for a career, who are trying to find their way in the world. I think that's quite quite a good way of thinking about it. The people we work with are looking for their their way. They're looking for the path that they should take, and we we can help them to find that by giving them information by helping them to think, by helping them to reflect and so on. And then also, how can we engage, involve and listen to other students and stakeholders as we build and de de develop our integrated career guidance approach? So hopefully there's some food for thought for you there. I will stop now and, and happily take some questions if people are, have got anything they want to ask. Um, but hopefully that gives you a whistle stop tour of why I think career guidance is important and hopefully why you, you might want to get involved and then thinking about how it starts to be interacting with some of these complicated big issues that people are facing in their lives. So I'll stop there, thank you. Wow, wow. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Tristram. We are very, very lucky to have you. As I said earlier, he is a well sought out speaker around the world on this space. I love what uh, so many things that is talked about, about how career guidance helps education systems to work well, labor markets to work well, how career guidance helps us in our environment, good health. My goodness, it is so good. I, I, I picked so many things and especially how to offer the different perspectives. The, quick, the key questions that is asked is a very good to reflect on us so, uh, for all, all of us. Like, why do we offer? What approaches do we have? And are we qualified? Are we able? Can we say that we are able to actually do this? Thank you so much, Professor Tristram. As I said again, we are very, very lucky to have you. Um, and I'll tell the team that it is he's a very well sought out uh, speaker. Anybody with a question, you can uh, raise up your hand. You can ask him at this time, or you can write on the chat. Anyone with a question? And mute, raise up your hand and you can ask him when he's here with us.
Are we together? Did we understand? Or anyone with a question? All right, I think we'll just go on uh, as you reflect, as you reflect, Dr. Uh, Professor Tristram, just stay with us. As we continue, uh, they can reflect and then they can ask you questions even at the end, even as we move on. At this moment, uh, okay, uh, relax, take a glass of water, a breather, and then as we move on. So uh, at this juncture, I would like to introduce Dr. Massey. Um, I liked uh, what uh, Professor Tristram talked about, that uh, we need to reflect about the kind of approaches, the kind of tools, the competencies we have, and all that. And that is why I would like to invite Dr. Massey so that I uh, should be able to tell us how do we gain these competences so that we are we can also compete with professor here? How are we able to be, get upscaled or tooled so that we can actually be as good and help the individuals and the persons and the societies that we work with? Uh, so Dr. Masi, the floor is yours. You can uh, um, share with us. Thank you, Margaret. I'm sharing. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, my role is to just to share in terms of uh, how can we get the right competences and uh, so that we can be able to address the needs that, and the challenges that are taking place in the, in the world and so that we can be more in, impactful uh, in terms of who we need, in terms of the clients or the kind of people that we interact with and who need our services. So basically, we have um, we have to think in terms of if the changes, the disruptions are taking place, and the world is changing. So it means we need either to reskill, we need to upskill, or generally get new, completely new set of skills, new skills. And so the purpose of this, as we reflect on what Professor has shared, is that how can I get new skills? Is already in my practice, do I need extra skills so that I can be more effective and so that I can address the needs that are presented? So uh, in our situation, we have some of this that are, this is what the scenario on the ground. And I'm sure everyone can bear witness from wherever we sit, these are some of the challenges that we experience and uh, we need intervention in this area. So we have many students or any youth having many choices and they are not very sure which one they want to take. So there is a lot of information and so they need to narrow down to the choices that will be able to speak to them. We have many educated and unemployed youth. And so there's advocacy in terms of, uh, we need to advocate for them is uh, what uh, Professor has said that career guidance can provide uh, an opportunity for us to be advocates for those who are unemployed. We have in the school system, students making choices of courses, choose a choice of subjects and ETC. We have uh, engaged in uh, our curriculum has changed in terms of the reform and uh, its potential, its mission is to nurture every learner's potential. So, we need to have those skills of how to identify and document nature's talents and how they can be developed and how they can grow. We have many others who are undecided and when we have undecided population, we go to see some statistics, how they represent or how they exist in our, in our situation. Others, general confusion. And so how can we be able to uh, overcome some of these challenges? Statistically, within our local education system, transition from post-secondary into, from basic education into post-secondary education, we have the transition at uh, about 70%, I mean, 30% uh, 
uh, into tertiary education, both university and uh, TVET. And then about 70% remain. We are not sure, uh, we, we cannot account for the 70%. And this is the study, this is the data from economic survey, um, the body that provides all the data uh, within the Kenya, Bureau, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics in Kenya, this is the data. And so if we look even from 2020, 2021 to 2022, the picture we still have not changed much. And um, this is the range within which the transition from basic education is. So does that mean that, uh, that uh, the transition into post-secondary in terms of skills developed, basic education provides uh, basic skills or literacy and numeracy, but the skills to contribute economically are acquired in post-secondary education. Why are we having as many, um, 72 up to 70% not proceeding with post-secondary education? And uh, so what is the challenge and how can we take advantage of that? How can we give hope and how can we help them so that they can be able to engage uh, in economic activities that will help them in terms of, um, in terms of meaningful and decent work? Uh, reports by Federation of Kenya Employers 2018 uh, skills mismatch uh, shows that uh, again, um, um, uh, graduates live in uh, our learning institution, in post-secondary learning institutions, they are not well prepared for the world of work. So this is also another area. How can we, as uh, how can career guidance make an intervention in that particular area? We have an uh, alignment Again, 66% says um, a research that was done recently represents about 66% are in their own careers. How can this be preempted so that we don't get uh, into that state? Uh, uh, UNICEF did a, a survey of happy employees globally that covered, that targeted about 40 countries. And these are the statistics that are 63% dislike their jobs and 24% hate it. So dislike and hate are very strong emotions. And so it means the issues that um, um, the mental health, uh, dissatisfaction, health issues that are uh, uh, th that manifest themselves in the in the world of work are uh, maybe a contribution to the to this. And how can this be resolved or what interventions can we provide as career guidance um, practice? Can it give hope and can they can there be can it be proactive? Can it provide a proactive um, solution so that this situation does not escal escalate or does not reach there? So for that reason, then, uh, we, if these are the challenges, then there's the qualifications that has been developed, uh, Kenya National, uh, that is equated by Kenya National Qualification Framework Level 6. And uh, it has a one year that has four semesters. And it has competences that are the, the syllabus content has four um, competency, con, yes, competencies. So we have the cognitive, where the competencies where we have theory and the practice of career guidance, and then the functional competencies of how do you deliver the service uh, in terms of either coaching, advising, mentoring, and it is counseling, etc. And then the personal competencies that an individual needs to have, the communication, the client service, and then ethical practices. Every discipline is governed, governed by ethical uh, principles. And so, so the same with the career guidance development has ethical competencies that the practitioner needs to observe in their own practice. So in terms of standards and compliance, the qualification is recognized and equated and accredited. Uh, the assessment and awarding certification is uh, by ABMA Education UK. This is the body that we want through, the, you go through this course. Uh, it is awarded, it's, um, uh, it's an exam, examination body uh, within, uh, from UK. And then as a center, as a college, we are registered as a, at, by Tiveta and also uh, an, 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 a learning center that is also registered by ABMA. Then in terms of staff, um, we have, most of them, they are qualified and are in career guidance and development from global universities and ATC. Then the delivery, uh, it is based on um, virtual classes, it's online, the same way we have part-time uh, part classes. So we, 
based on technology and how the closure, the how the impact of the of, of, of the COVID-19 um, that we can now be able to use and leverage on technology. This is how we have adapted and we have um, scheduled guided virtual classes by Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Then uh, we have learning activities that are extra work is uh, that is also self-paced that provides an individual to gather more information through a learning management system. And then assignments are also done by uh, through the online through Moodle learning management system. And then we also view, we know that the economic situation is not as good. So this also provides an opportunity for flexible payment plan. So how would this, in terms of the qualification, how can you use this? The, if it's a, new, it's a new area and the new skills that are likely to be useful uh, going forward is in curriculum and course workshop planning. So with these skills, then you can be able to develop either your own curriculum or uh, any course that you can be able to provide um, in, this, in this particular area, either in career counseling, either in a career mentoring, coaching, and ETC. Then also an opportunity to design, develop, and evaluate re and revise existing career education programs. If there is any institution or any programs that have been, um, that will be, that, that will be started in especially in this field of career guidance, then this is an opportunity to be able to use this. If you're already in that practice, then it's also an opportunity to integrate career management competences across uh, school curriculums, and especially for people who are teachers and also assigned with that role. Developing and reviewing career information products. One of the tools for career guidance information must be available, readily available. We have very few resources um, and career information resources. And so this provides an opportunity for people who are writers who can take advantage of this and be able to provide the right uh, Inform career information and in a in a format that is usable uh, across um, across lifespan. Then either again helping individuals develop their career portfolios, uh, as so that as we give people so that they also need to advocate for themselves. One of the ways is that to document their own skills and experiences, and then career guidance will be useful in helping individuals develop career portfolios. Uh, alongside that, so where would this be? Opportunities in uh, services in learning institutions, either for students directly, either for parents. We have the new reforms in the education, the CBC, and then we saw Office of Career Services Departments in tertiary institutions. We have about the 70% that uh, we are not able to account for. These are the youth not in education and not in training. So we have an opportunity as practitioners to address their career needs and be able to provide the uh, preempt their problems uh, professionally or address them uh, professionally. Then the services to change career changes or in job transitions, job loss, redundancy, and retirement, all these kind of people require some services so that they are, we can give them hope so that they can be able to move and uh, help them in terms of reflecting and be able to document their skills and their experiences and so that they can also be able to chat um, going forward and identify new opportunities. Then as a Already, you, you, you're already doing this work. It'd be an opportunity to expand your scope in the full range of career development services, either, uh, either a private practitioner or a consultant, so that your practice uh, expands into awareness, activities, exploration, preparation, and also transition. Then the service to impact people's careers over a lifetime to offer preventive uh, services before it's a crisis. We've already seen the the, the statistics, the statistics, how they, are, the, I mean, the, the statistics show that there is a crisis already in our situation. And so how can we preempt, how can we be proactive and either as career coaches, advisors, information specialists, and ETC, these are the opportunities this course should be able to provide. Um, in our local situation, we have the CBC has been mainstreamed within the junior secondary school. And so there's an opportunity that uh, it's uh, the career guidance needs to be offered to all the learners. 
uh, from grade seven all the way to grade nine, and then from 10 to 12 in the senior school. Then there's an opportunity that are the, for the practice or how it's going to be implemented. There'll be the committee to implement that. And then there'll be the opportunity to sensitize all learners on uh, career choices based on uh, the pathways in, uh, in, in senior school, uh, how to work with parents, how the schools are encouraged to use the services of experts. So the experts here, as I emphasize, are those then who are going to be, um, the Ministry of Education is going to approve. And so if we have the right competencies, we'll be able to do that. And the professional body is working with the ministry to see how that is done. So they already written um, an expression of interest of how to participate in that particular area. And then the opportunity to expose learners to job, job, job shadowing and other experiences to nurture them into their future career opportunities. This already then, this in learning institution, this already been mistrained within the, um, within the local, within the junior secondary school based on the guidelines that were, that were, that were launched or, or uh, published in January, 2023. Then within the TVET sector, um, Margaret mentioned that we are we are content developers. We were involved in development of a regional framework of career guidance and counseling for TVET systems that covers five countries. And so this already is available. And uh, if, uh, if we from a TVET institution, this is one of the frameworks that uh, will be uh, useful for you even to identify the area that you can apply. And uh, they will be useful mainly in terms of even the, the skills skill set that are needed. And this also, the TVETA also has developed uh, uh, requirements and guidelines and standards for how the career development services are going to be offered in TVET, uh, TVET sector. So these are some of the areas that are, that are growing and that have opportunity for you. So the way forward for this is that who do you think can benefit from this training? Is it you? Is it an employed graduate who can take up this area and be able to provide um, a, 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 an opportunity to retrain and also be able to get gather new skills? Is it your neighbor? Is it your child? Is it your child? Um, and this area is open to all. So we have a, a May intake that is ongoing and the classes will be starting on um, 22nd May in two weeks time. So if you have anyone you can recommend for this, either yourself or any other person, any person you think who can benefit from this, we'd be happy to do that so that they can build the competencies and be able to great, uh, take that opportunity and be able to participate. So the faculty members are this. Uh, so we have Pauline Wangombe who teaches uh, career guidance for workplaces. So she has all the experience uh, as a HR practitioner and also a career development assessor. So in this area, we'll be able to, uh, she's, she ably teaches that unit. Then Dr. Fidel Baraza, who is a uh, uh, passionate about special needs uh, population and uh, so we have career guidance for special needs population and so this is the unit that she teaches. Nikki Mo uh, is a colleague of Prof Professor Tristan, um, is, uh, teaches a theory of career guidance and also career education programs, how career education programs can be integrated within the school systems. Uh, Ms. Amy Wooly and Polly Wiggins, they are students of uh, um, Nikki. And uh, so Nikki, Amy um, is good in uh, career information, mentoring, advising, and also passionate about career guidance for learning institutions. Polly, career guidance information and career guidance practice. Then career academic um, research methods, we have Dr. Nina Taylor from South Africa, and then we have the LMS. Uh, the learning management support, uh, Dr. I mean, Mr. Edward Aligula, actually he's a PhD candidate uh, and his area is in academic, in uh, curriculum and assessment. So he's one of them who helps us in LMS support. So I think I want to end there and invite you that uh, we are very few people in this field. And so if we have as many um, people trained in this area, We'll be able to preempt and be able to proactive, uh, be able to participate and, and, and give 
hope to as many uh, the people who are suffering either in their career development or in their choices where they are undecided where there's confusion we can be able to unpack that and i think that's what um professor tristam um was trying to to tell us that career guidance can give hope we can be advocates for people who are unemployed we can help people manage their careers in terms of their growth and those are the skills that this qualification will be able to provide for you. Thank you. Um, I want to stop there and give it back to you, Margaret. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Masi, for that. Uh, we have seen how we need to be qualified, how we need to be qualified and how we need to get the competencies so that we are able to uh, offer the career services uh, exactly the way it's supposed to be done. I have put in, I have, uh, I have put in the brochure for this, and I've also put in the form in which you can uh, also put in your name, and then you'll be able to follow through. Uh, I don't know whether there is anybody who has a question so far for uh, Professor Tristram, uh, Tristram, who is still with us, Professor Huli is still with us, and is waiting for any of the questions. I can see one or some of the questions is answered. If there is any questions, then you would be able to answer. I can't see any hand. So I think it was as clear as day. Uh, what you've taught us and what you've talked about, uh, Professor, and we want to thank you so much. We are coming to the end uh, of the career conversation today. We'd like you to stay tuned as we continue to bring you more and more information, uh, more and more persons who are qualified in this sector so that they are able to give us more on careers and different things. You can see everything, every time is different and we are all, uh, we all learn every day. Uh, of course, there's somebody who said in the chat that they've learned is very insightful and it has really, we really learned from that. So we want to ask whether you, if you want to be receiving alerts on our upcoming webinars, which we've done either weekly or bi-weekly, please text, I want to be a member of Career Conversations to that number 0743822925. And we shall add you as part uh, of the career conversations team. At this juncture, I want to take this opportunity first to thank you, uh, uh, Professor, for giving us such insightful, um, uh, insightful, insightful knowledge and uh, the wisdom that you've given us. It's something that we'll go with. We want to thank you so much. We know that you have so much to do in Norway and in Derby in the UK and want to thank you for taking that opportunity. I also want to thank the participants uh, for finding time to come here. I can see quite a number of people who are always with us all the way from Somalia, 